the theater of the mind. Well, it's important. It's it's the view of the. Yeah, yeah, they play dog. No, it, it's when the. It is like when you pull the brains from the nose of the patient, then fill the rest with zunbi juice. Yeah, man. Tis why I'm always calling him a dunce bat. Oh, good grief. Why can't I ever have an intelligent conversation with you guys? You know what? Just so be it. I'm riding solo on this one. Cue the intro. The theater of the mind is an important concept that the writer must establish with the reader. Preserving it is of the utmost importance. And this is a concept that my friend Raymond Nix taught me when I was a young storyteller. It entails understanding the balance of the atmosphere, details, and pace while choosing the correct words to keep it all within the intended context. There are many aspects to this concept, but first we have to understand what it entails, which are intentions correctly translated from the writer to the reader. This is why things such as critique partners, beta readers and proofreaders, and especially editors are so important. Words stream images into the reader's mind. Sometimes that effectiveness can be dependent upon the style of the writer and the taste of the reader. My personal advice is a strategy I used in coin called the weaving method. At least it's a conclusion I arrived to on my own. I'm sure other writers likely use it and have a different reference for it. It works like so. A few lines of description building the environment. Then the introduction of the characters with a few lines of description. Followed by actions that may lead to more lines of description. This is then followed by dialogue thoughts, and other introductions, surprises, etc. And each aspect can be included any number of times at the author's behest. The idea is to avoid a straight laundry list of details and world building that were usually found in the older styles of writing. This allows the writer to incorporate new details as your writing unfolds without having to cement the reader's view, allowing your storytelling to be more flexible. Keep in mind, it's best to announce the most pertinent details at the beginning to set the stage for the plot of the scene, while weaving in the more inconsequential details later that will help you flesh out a more vivid picture for the reader. With the weaving method, world building doesn't have to be built upon long, drawn out, dictated stretches of narration, but rather it is constructed by the reader viewing the world unfolding before them. The reader begins to see the whole picture unfold as the character interacts with the environment and also the plot and the sharing of dialogue, both inner and vocal. Ultimately, the idea is to show your world while keeping the reader engaged and the plot moving. I hope this helps provide more tools to your war chest, fellow writers. We'll cover more tactics later for painting a picture for the reader. My challenge for you is to try to incorporate this within your next project and let me know how it goes. Or if you already use it, tell me how it's helped you. Take care, friends. Here's some treats, baby girl. Good job today.